Hey, I haven't been doing much reading, so I thought I'd do a tag today um, to put up this coming Tag Tuesday. There's one going around that's pretty interesting. I saw David Novak revived it. It's one that goes around year after year, I think. And then I saw Steve Donahue do it, too. Steve Donahue commanded that everybody in this corner of YouTube do it, so who am I to disobey? Anyway, it's the mid-year freakout tag. Here's David. And here's the questions. The mid-year freakout tag. I'm going to try and go through them quick, but there are quite a number of them. Some I don't have any answers for. But I've got my list of books read this year up here. And the first prompt is, the best book you've read so far in 2024. That is definitely one of these books that I read. You know, I know exactly what it is. It's the only reason I want to do the tag because I've talked about it so much recently. But Oh, it is, of course, the Oxbow Incident, mm -hmm. which is just so powerful, just so wonderfully read. I probably would have said... Um, well, I'll skip that because I can use that on another question. There's a couple other really good books I read uh, this year, but I think that's... And there was the, the first book I was going to say uh, was the... Uh, Anthony Powell's cycle that Dance the Music of Time, that 12-book cycle, I read that last year. I read it in December. That's how fast time goes, so can't count that. Anyway, the best sequel you've read so far in 2024. This is also a book I just finished. That's Hannibal by Thomas Harris, uh, my second favorite Hannibal Lecter novels, the third book, third Hannibal Lecter book. There's one more to go. It's a prequel. I've heard bad things about, but I also heard bad things about Hannibal. So, anyway, um, but, but you know, it's probably the only. Well, it's not the only sequel I read because I read a couple. I'm reading a couple series like the 87th Precinct, and I read a bunch, of the Valentine mystery series uh, by uh, Lauren Estelman, uh, Valentino mystery series. Uh, but, and I read, uh, actually I read a fair number of sequels. I read, uh, the others, doesn't matter. I've done videos about most of them. I've been doing the channel since when? I think February. So the only reading I missed was really my first, you know, missed talking about was the first, uh, five or six books I read this year. Okay, best sequel. So, number three, new release you haven't read yet, but one, two, there's none. I'm, I'm really not focused on new books at all. I thought there was one or two things I was waiting for. Uh, most anticipated release, uh, number. so uh, that's number three. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Again, not looking forward to any uh, books that I haven't read yet. I was looking forward to... Oh gosh. Um, okay, you know, the next book in the Anthony Horowitz series I'm reading, um, Close to Death, but you know, that already came out and I'd already read it. That was really the only thing I was looking forward to this year as a new book. As you know, if you've watched this channel for a while, I'm pretty much focused on older books. And let's see, do, 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 most number five, biggest disappointment. Well, I guess that would have to be, and in retrospect, this probably shouldn't be such a big disappointment. I don't know why I thought this book was going to be so good, but there's this book called The Man Who, Pay, the Man Who Pays the Rent by the actress, the actor Judy Dench, which was supposed to be about her uh, acting in Shakespeare, her lifelong relationship as an actor, a stage actor in Shakespeare plays. And for some reason I thought this was going to be a uh, thoughtful, well-written book, even though she's an actor, I don't think she's written anything else. I guess I just had that in my head. Really, it's just a collection of the most trivial interviews that she, that, that a friend made of her, you know, where she just mentions like whatever happened. I only read a few pages of it. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, they had really good sandwiches at the deli across from where we had, where we were, did that Macbeth and stuff. It's not very insightful at all. It's, I guess, if I had expect, hadn't expected something just like tossed off, 
under her name and all that, I would have liked it more. But it was a big disappointment to me because I had been waiting for that for a long time. Number six, biggest surprise. Maybe this is a little negative too. My biggest surprise was that I liked Red Dragon, the first Hannibal Lecter novel, better than Silence of the Lambs, the second one, which is supposed to be uh, Thomas Harris's best book. That was a surprise, but I liked them both a lot. And also, on the positive side, not to make this the entire, entire Hannibal Lecter tag, but the book Hannibal that I just finished and I said was the best sequel I read this year was a surprise because I heard it was lousy too. Favorite new author, debut or new to you? Okay, I'll put uh, Elizabeth Eng Engstrom there. Elizabeth Engstrom, the horror novelist. I read two of her books during the horror event. Um, one book with two novellas in it, and and her um, and her first novel. Uh, both great books. I have one more by her. I haven't been able to get around to it yet because of all the other stuff you know that we have going on here all the time. So, When Darkness Loves Us. Oh, maybe that was all I read. I keep, I keep thinking of it as, as, as having read two different books, maybe, because it has, When Darkness Loves Us has two novellas in it. Uh, that one, When Darkness Loves Us, and a longer one called um, some dumb title. I can't remember even though that's the, the superior story. So <clears throat> I feel like I'm mumbling. I haven't been talking much because I've just been in the house baking away in the 100 degree weather as everybody else is across the country. I mean across the planet. Okay. So that was my favorite new author. Newest fictional crush. I don't know what this means. If it's a character, the only thing I can think of is... Anne Darrow from the King Kong no novelization of the movie, which I read early on, one of the first books I talked about on this channel. Anne Darrow played by Fay Ray in the movie. Uh, kind of uh, really liked the character in, in the book. I thought it was a really good book. Uh, you know, especially for a novelization, I thought they did a really good, good job. Whoever wrote it worked really hard on it. Um, I don't think novelizations were all that common at that time in, 19, in the early 1930s. And uh, I thought this was a very good novel, and I liked the character quite a bit. I thought she had quite a good inner life uh, as compared to the character of the movie, which has to scream a lot anyway, although I like the movie, of course. Okay, so I guess that's a cross. I don't know. Newest favorite character. Okay, newest favorite character. Well, I don't know. It's hard for me to think of a character uh, outside of the context of a book and just think of them as a favorite by themselves. It would almost have to be like a series character or something. And um, So I'm going to pass on that. I can't think of I have a favorite character the kind of books I write, I read, uh, the people are not the most heroic people or all that, or, you know, there's a couple favorite characters I have from, from, from mystery series I've been reading, but nobody comes to mind. Books that made you, okay, did I skip Biggest Surprise? Oh no, that's where I am. Oh, I, I got out of order here. Biggest surprise. Did I skip that one? I'll put a... Mm, forget it. Anyway. I thought there was, was... Isn't there another best book? Okay, books that made you cry. Nothing. I'm, I'm dead inside. I, I don't cry anymore. Uh, I can't even think of movies that made me cry. Although I know there have been some, of course. And next time I, I cry in a movie, I'm going to write it down in case this kind of question ever comes up. If a book ever made me cry, I don't know that it has. Books that made you happy, most of them make me happy. I was, uh, you know, if they're, if 
anything above average makes me happy. Anything that I felt like I really used my time well makes me happy. So uh, that's the Elizabeth Engstrom horror novels. That's The Oxbow Incident. That's O Pioneers by Willa Cather. That's Our Lady of Darkness by Fritz Leiber. Uh, here's another disappointment. I'm past disappointment, but these Brian Garfield uh, Western novels are kind of bumming me out. I did read three, as I said in another video, I had, I think, seven of them total. The third one was the best I've read, but still when I think about having, you know, four more to do, I just kind of get, so it's, so it's kind of put the brakes on my Western, my enjoyment of the Western uh event tune on the range because basically I was trying to use books I've already just got so I don't know if I'm going to get through any more of those they just seem a little bit like work and especially for something like a Brian Garfield novel that should not be what you want to do anyway doing good here anyway so that was somehow I got off on that I don't know if I even answered uh, books that made you happy but uh, most of them made me happy well written books make me happy so uh, all of the above. Twelve, the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. Well, again, for regular viewers, I haven't, I don't own any books uh, because I'm traveling and I just have a Kindle, so all the books pretty much look the same uh, level of beautiful. Uh, you know, if, if there's much design going into ebooks, it's probably lost. You know, there's some nice covers, but. Um, I'll mention The Cocktail Waitress by uh, James M. Kane, uh, which has a beautiful cover uh, from Hard Case Crime. I read that early on, before I started the channel. Uh, terrific book. Uh, the last book uh, to ever that will ever come out under the name James M. Kane. It was a novel he was working on at the time of his death was much better than the novels he'd been writing in the years up to it. Much, much better. He'd kind of been written out. He was kind of written out, in my opinion. I tried to read everything, he, you know, because I love his early novels, his famous novels like Postman Always Rings Twice and Double Indemnity and Serenade and Love's Lovely Counterfeit and uh, Mildred Pierce, all those early novels that his reputation rests on are some of my favorite books ever written. And then he wrote uh, other books that were not as good, uh, but he kept writing till the end of his life, and he was working on this book called The Cocktail Waitress, or at least that's what it's called now, that Charles R. R. Day at Hard Case Crime found out about, did, put in a lot of work going around, uh, co collating different drafts that were in different places, some like with his agent, some with publishers, you know, some in the hands of relatives and all that, and putting together a, a complete draft, you know, and edit it into a, a work which is as nearly as good as any of his classic novels, such as Devil Indemnity or or the others I mentioned, Mildred Pierce, especially, especially uh, similar to Mildred Pierce, I think, written in the early, early seven, late sixties, early seventies, something like that. Really worth checking out if you like uh, uh, mystery books and if you like James Cain because it was really contemporary. He really kept up with the times. It was uh, read like a book from the 70s, not like some old guy uh, 30 years out of date uh, trying to write a contemporary novel. So he did a great job on that and it was great that Hard Grace Crime put into work to put that out. I don't know that it sold any better than when they they drop a new Stephen King novella, which they've done a couple times, or other more famous authors, but I'm really glad they were able to do it. So that's beautiful in a way. The last question, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, do I need to read nothing? I'm supposed to be reading I should just quit talking about it and people forget that I ever said I was going to do it. I, the, uh, the Rise and Fall, I mean, the, the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. I read the first 
volume. I loved it, but since it's the, it was the end of a volume and some convenient stopping place, I never got back to it. I would like to finish that before the end of the year. And I have a couple of Robert Louis Stevenson books left over from that I picked out left over from Spring into Adventure that I would like to finish. And and all the stuff I have uh, set up for Garb August and all that, I'm going to get through as much as I can. But nothing I need to finish, I guess. Because it's supposed to be fun, right? We're here for fun. Anyway, uh, that's where I'm going to stop it. Uh, I'm not going to tag anybody. Just do it if you want to do it. And we'll see who does it. Talk to you later.